<clears throat> Good evening and salutations, my GH fan. So, the scene between Nina and Sonny. Here's a trend that I just haven't been liking. There's just been this feeling of... I don't know exactly how to put it into words. But when you slam the door in Nina's face, right? She's crying. She's all like, oh, I want you back and this, that, and the third. And even today, towards the end, where he said what he said, and he walked off like Nina never really meant anything to him. And she's crying and she's all like, oh, you know, I'm not going to give up on our marriage and this, that, and the third. And I'm just like, and you know, granted, this this goes for men as well, but at some point, you have to have enough self-respect to walk away from a situation like that, because if this this guy is that they're treating you as though you don't matter. You're not important enough to sit there and fight for? Then why the hell should you bother to waste one more goddamn iota of a teardrop towards him? Now, this is coming from somebody who genuinely likes Sonny. And I do like Sonny. But I'm going to be honest, bro, you're coming across as trash. Point blank, period. You know, when he said, well, you know, what you did was, was reckless and petty and it's unforgivable, I'm just like, bro, you kill people for a living. You, you really want to sit there and start talking about unforgivable? You do know where you're going when you're dead, right? <laughs> because if you think you're going upstairs, uh, yeah, that ain't happening. The fact that he actually, the fact that a, 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 a mob guy actually had to audacity to sit there and say, well, you know, you're being petty and vindictive. I just don't see that as a way of forgiveness. <laughs> what? You know, Nina was going to talk about the stuff that Carly did to her, right? And she's like, you know, I feel like I'm the only person in the debt that's upset about that. And it's just like, it goes completely over Sonny's head. Sonny's so more, more worried about what Nina did to Carly than what Carly did to Nina. Not just once, but twice. I think I would have been more mad at Sonny for the simple fact that you said, hey, listen, you know, you want to sit there and talk. And then he asked her to sit there and say, you know, let's not waste each other's time. I'm like, bro, let's be honest. He practically snipped there pouring her heart out to you. And it's like you already made up your mind about what you was going to sit there and say. So if you want to sit there and talk about wasting time, why would you even bother to sit there and listen if you already made up your mind? I feel like I have more to say about that, but you know, I'll, I'll, I'll sit there and say that for the live. So the scene between Blaze, Chris, Christine, and whatever the hell that woman's name is, that's Blaze's mom, right? Here's my issue with this scene. Here's my issue with this scene, right? Because on one hand, you know, it's a brave thing to sit there and, and, and come out and tell your mother that you are, that you're gay, right? But this isn't the, the thing is, this isn't the first time that she tried to sit there and talk to her. And, you know, apparently she does what she always does. She, she buries her head in the sand. She pretty much sit there and say, no, 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 no. That's pretty much what she was doing. So on a certain level, it's brave. But I felt like it was so unfair to Christine 
to drag her through that whole scene, through that whole everything, making her feel awkward and uncomfortable and having this woman say little things here and there. Oh, you know, you, you talk my daughter into this, this, that, and the third. I'm like, this was just wrong. You want to sit there and confront your mother about your sexuality? Fine. I'm with that. But it's hella selfish to sit there and drag her through that. And that's what she did. And in the end, it didn't matter because her mom did what she always does. And she also, apparently she has gay friends, but her daughter, whoa, hey. And that's what Christine was sitting there saying. Like, it's different when it's your daughter. They talk for a little bit. She's like, I got to go. And then she has this look on her face before she leaves. I'm just sitting there thinking, um, yeah, I don't know. You told her. I always go back to that day when she pretty much is like, yeah, I'm done. And let's just kind of just call it quits. And then for some odd reason, you decide to go back out with her, which is just beyond me. Now it almost looked like she regrets that decision. Christina got a lot going on. And I have to tell you the truth, the last thing she needs would be Snitta getting into a messy relationship like that. Especially with some combative ass woman that she don't even know from a hole in the wall. Maxie and Spinelli. So at first, Maxie tries to avoid the situation altogether when you know, Spinelli's talking about he's in love with her, just that and a third, but, you know, she says it back. And it takes a little bit of coaxing, but she seems like she's willing to sit there and give um, the whole thing a try. Then he tells her that he lied about the pipes bursting. So he did it. Well, once he, once he lied about that, she was like, what's going on? So... He tells her the reason why. She's pissed off and she's, she's pissed off and she's insulted. You know? Um lying to her and also just being like, hey, listen, by the way, you know, like like she's not adult enough to sit there and take care of her own responsibilities that, that Spinelli and her mom had to sit there and kinda help her out. And maybe it's a little bit, maybe it's a little bit above. Because I understand, first of all, starting off, starting off a relationship with a lie, it's always a bad thing. That is just always a bad thing. So I understand that part. And I even understand to an extent her being mad and being like, hey, listen, I'm a grown adult. I got kids. Like, I, I you know, I'm capable of doing this. Don't sit there and treat me like I'm a kid. Right? When you're on the other hand, everyone needs help. Right? And to be honest, she was in a bad financial situation. So, regardless of how upset you were, and, you know, granted he lied, it didn't change the facts that you were still in a bad financial situation. And him being there and him helping did relieve the financial stress, the financial situation. That's something that, regardless of her being upset, that's just the facts. That's just math right there. And she goes so far to even sit there, you know, when, when Spinelli's like, and I only did it to really help you because I, you know, I did it out of love. And she's like, oh, well, you know, Peter August said that. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry. Did you just compare Spinelli to Peter effing August? Are you serious? I understand the basis, but I'm like, in that moment, I would have felt offended. I literally would have felt offended. I was like, whoa, let's not go down this route because that was an insult and it would end very badly. So, um, but she pretty much kicks him out and then he leaves and then she runs back outside and is calling from him. And I'm like, why are you calling from him? You, you told him to leave. He left. Like, what are you, what are you, what are you calling for? You just said you was going to ship his stuff wherever he was. So, there was really no need to sit there and, and rush back to the door. Now, Carly 
and germ. Who needs therapy? Let's just be honest. He literally says that he can't sit there and get past um, this whole thing with Nina. And Carter's like, look, listen, I'm done. And the one thing she was like to say that I like was she was like, Nina is always going to be Nina, but I can choose to be different. And I just tell you, if this conversation goes on way too long, a person that they're trying to convince them, hey, listen, you have to either choose me or your revenge for Nina. In the end, they wound up just, you know, having loving in the afternoon. Um, after he seemed like he finally was willing to sit there and just let it go. And I'm like, he's like, well, I just don't understand. How am I going to sit there and do this? I'm just like, are you, are you serious? Is no one going to sit there and call out the fact that he has PTSD? Which is fine. But there are places that could sit there and help you with that. You just have to sit there and be humbled. You have to be strong enough and humbled to sit there and take that help. That's it. I mean, granted, there's a little bit more to that, but I mean, that's the basis. If he's not just like, well, I'm struggling to sit there and try to get past of everything I, you know, of, of what she did. And I'm like, bro, you either, you know, when, when, when Carly was like, you know, Nina only wins if we, if we break up. We have all these red flags that's going on and, and things are not just saying, hey, listen, you have to sit there and let this go. And you still can't do it. That's why I felt like this conversation just lasted way too long. And then just got resolved and said, okay, cool. I'm going to sit there and try. Okay. All right. So we're going to sit there and do love in the afternoon. We got to, we got to go somewhere else. No, probably didn't, but whatever. The, the point is, it, it, I don't know. There's something about that conversation just kind of drove me crazy a little bit. And then towards the end, it was just like, oh, okay. So we're just going to put a little band on it and, and it'll just be fine. All right. Cool. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I don't know. This whole Nina being so damn needy, needy towards Sonny who is just treating her. And I, here's the thing. I get on a level that he's upset that you know, sending Carly to jail was sending a family member from Donna and Avery and, and Amelia and Wiley and stuff like that away. And I understand being angry. Like, I, I get being angry, you know, the mother of your children, that bond for life. I get that part, right? But Sonny's like, you know, listen, I've made mistakes too and I've asked for forgiveness. I'm like, but you don't seem like you are damn near even willing to sit there and, and hear her out. You haven't talked to her in like weeks or months or whatever, and then you just send over divorce papers? But you said that you as a person that was asking to seek for forgiveness at, at, at times of your life, but you can extend her the same courtesy just to even hear her out? What kind of ass backwardsness is that? That's why I'm just like, when I'm seeing Nina crying and doing this other stuff, I'm just like, don't, don't, ladies, like I said, don't ever be that person because I'm going to be honest. We, we ain't, we ain't worth your, your dignity and self-respect. We're not. We're not. Our joysticks are. And I love my joystick, but it's, it's not worth the, <laughs> it's just, I don't know. It's just something that, I mean, and granted, this, the first time I felt like that when I saw Nina just like crying and slamming the door in her face I'm like bro are you are you serious anyway like I said I feel like I have more about that um so we'll talk about it tonight but um yeah no one's worth your self respect and your dignity you can't look yourself in the mirror after going through that that person ain't worth it anyway um I will see you in the next video or live stream.